Good evening, good afternoon, everybody. Sonia Rollins, I am the host for Back Talk. Thank you for joining us. We're excited to have um, one of Burlington's newer, not new company, but newer members to the Bur Burlington Area Chamber of Commerce and new to Burlington. We have Ipswich with me today, Jean Hopkins, who is yep. the Chief Marketing Officer, is Correct. that right? Yes. And Stephen Rotman, who is the Chief People Officer. I think that's a really cool title. It is, thank Chief you. Chief People Officer. So welcome, guys. Thank, thank you, you for joining us. Thank you yep. for having us. Um, so I always start with this because I think it's really interesting for people to just, you know, if someone were to say to you, what does Ipswich do? Um, you know, what's your elevator pitch on what Ipswich does? <laughs> well, we sell software. We sell software to IT professionals. So we have been in business for over 26 years. The company was founded in this area. It is still, the original founder still owns 100% of the company. Okay. Uh, we have network monitoring software, secure file transfer, FTP, I'm probably like, you know, all these acronyms, no, right? They're absolutely. so interesting. <laughs> we, we sell globally. Uh, we have over a million users of our software, and if you're in IT, you have heard of What's Up Gold, or you have heard of Move It, right? Yes, yes, <laughs> absolutely. Oh, that's great. So, and talk about your client base, because, you know, IT is something, you're, you're dealing not directly with the consumer, yet the consumer, of course, is the end user. Am I saying that right, or are you dealing, what does what your client base look well, like? Well, we're B2B. Yeah. We're a B2B technology company, okay. so we would be selling to a business, like a Citibank, or an American Airlines, or Disney, as an example and they would be buying our network monitoring software for their internal network in a way to be able to find out they want to be able to isolate which um, machines are on the particular network and find out if there's any servers down what kind of alerts that they're going to be getting because an IT professional I always say that a good day for an IT person is when nothing goes wrong there you yeah. go, and, right? and, yeah. and everybody always has there's always a server down there's always something that's going wrong and we have a brand new product that's coming out next month uh, that we'll be announcing that will also the monitoring of virtual machines in the cloud uh, storage monitoring as well as mobile so um, when you think about all the devices that you use and know how important it is to be able to know where everything is and how it's being used, that becomes important. Okay. The Move It file transfer product is very important for compliance. I'm sure you've heard of HIPAA yes. or PCI, and it's a big thing right now in Europe with GDPR, and it's all about data privacy. And are you able to transfer information like in a medical environment to go from a hospital to a doctor without that data being breached by a third party and invading your privacy? And there's a lot of fines that are associated with the compliance aspect of things. So our product, and we're also going to be launching a brand new product, uh, 2018 Move It, and that's going to be able to do even more. And um, we're really doing very, very well as an organization. I would imagine it's very important, not yeah. only you know for whoever's information is being secured, I guess, but yeah. for, for them to know that there's a company behind them that's doing the work and has been doing right. the work for right. some time. So let's talk about um, Ipswich as far as location-wise. You've been in business for 26, 26 years. years. You are new to Burlington, yes. and we love asking people, um, you know, why Burlington? You were in Lexington. You we chose were. to come to Burlington. You know, tell we're in us Lexington about for a number of years, and um, you know, our employee base was very comfortable there, very um, you know, used to the commute and what was around us. But as our lease was up and we decided, what, what's the next, next chapter for Ipswich? We, uh, we surveyed employees, we took, uh, we loaded up our employees, we all went on buses around the local <laughs> area to look field at trips. spaces and did yeah. a field trip. Yeah. And um, you know, when people came back in the survey with, they don't want their commute drastically altered. As you know, this area can be famous for 10 miles, could take an hour <laughs> depending yeah. where you're going. Yes. We have a lot of folks coming from New Hampshire, the north, you know, up Route 3. We have folks coming from as far north on 95 as the New Hampshire border, mm. as far south as the Rhode Island border. Yes. And so what, um, what is tolerable? And then people want to be able to walk places and go out for lunch and find another, you know, a friend is in a local business and run an errand at lunch and also feel like they're part of a, of a bustling community. Mm -hmm. And um, you don't always have to be downtown in a big city to do that, which we discovered. So we found a great space up at, the t up at the top of Wayside Drive. We have a perfect Boston view, but we don't sit in Boston traffic. <laughs> there you go. That's um, true. We can walk across the street to Wayside Commons and uh, people have just fell in, fallen in love with the space and the location. And, you know, some people saved 10 minutes on the commute and some people uh, spent more, but, um, you know, people overall have just been thrilled with the location. So we're thrilled to be in Burlington. You know what, Stephen, I love that you say bustling because I, I think that I think that it's hard sometimes for people who, you know, I'll take myself for example, I've been in Burlington for 25, 
plus years, and before that, you know, d didn't live much, much further away. But Burlington has really changed over the course of many years, and you, I think I remember you said you grew up in around this area, I right? Did. And um, so Burlington offers that unique approach or that unique characteristic for companies because it gives you a little bit of um, of a local feel, a smaller feel, but it still offers a lot of different things for the employee base. And if I'm hearing you right, that was important. That was an important factor. That, that was very important. And yeah. I can say we just had um, we just had a lot of our employees from around the world come in for for a meeting that we had, and we. Um, we didn't have to drive the, the employee base into Boston. Uh, people came and right. um, you know they stayed in, uh, in the new um, the new hotel on District Ave, right, and they the walked over to Legal yeah. Seafood, and to them that is Boston. <laughs> Absolutely, right? so they close enough. <laughs> so they walked over to Legal Seafood, and they had the clam chowder they had heard about. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. know we have uh, we have uh, <laughs> folks coming in from from Galway and Ireland, and they came. I want the clam chowder, and you know <laughs> they went was. to Legal Seafood, and we were able to. We found a great hotel in the Marriott who could accommodate us, and yes. we found you know great food in the Tuscan Kitchen, and we had Kings, which. You know, you could be in Kings in Boston or Kings in Burlington. You wouldn't know the difference when Absolutely. you're inside, right? right? right. And so, um, you know, we were able to have people. People say they came to Boston, and in fact, they were in Burlington the whole time. But uh, it was it was a trip to Boston, and so it was a really nice way to be able to share that experience without, mm -hmm. um, you know, without being kind of in a drab suburban environment. So yeah, nice, right? Yeah, I, w we're proud of it. I mean, I think it's really it's something that has really evolved over the course of years, and to hear companies say that they locate here for that reason kind of I think kind of affirms the development that's been going on in the Burlington area you know and um, and we always talk about even f some of the surrounding communities I, I think Burlington tends to be that that centralized spot you know mm -hmm. you can easily access the airport and things like that yeah. but you're not right on top of it all so um, your headquarters is here yes. but y you you have offices in other parts of the country, correct? Yep, we have an office in Atlanta. We yeah. have an office in Madison. We have an office in Galway, Ireland. We have an office in North Augusta. North Augusta, South Carolina. <laughs> That's right. Wow. We have an office in uh, Livonia, right outside of Detroit. We have a space in um, in Utah as well. Wow. And we have employees stationed you know, from remote offices around the world. We also have a space in Germany. Um, but we have employees um, around the world in almost every time zone. Um, some working from home and some working from our brick and mortar offices. And so, um, you know, we have a number of different kind of feels and flavors around the organization. But this has been a great place to kind of call headquarters and call home. So I love that. All right. And speaking of home, we are going to take a quick break. We're going to talk about, um, we're going to see one of our charitable partners with part of the BACC's charitable partner, um, partners, the Burlington Youth and Family Services. They do such a great job, a department of of the town of Burlington, and we'll be right back after this quick break with Burlington Youth and Family Services. My name is Christine Shruin. I'm the director of Burlington Youth and Family Services, formerly known as the Burlington Community Life Center. We've been a town department for more than 40 years, providing mental health services and social services to residents of the town of Burlington. The counseling services we provide are for families who are raising um, adolescents and young adults between the ages of 9 and 25. Uh, the social services that we offer are for any residents within the town. Um, we connect them with resources that are on the local, state, and federal level. We also have an extensive group program. Most people know about our NIPM program, National Youth Project, using mini bikes. We work with middle school kids. We also offer a Fit Girls program for fourth and fifth grade girls and a parenting group. Thank you. Okay, we're back. See that? I was throwing things. I always get caught doing something. <laughs> <laughs> Christine Truhan with um, Burlington Youth and Family Services. They do a great job, a Department of the Town in Burlington, and part of the Burlington Area Chamber of Commerce Charitable Foundation. We are here with Ipswich. Thank you guys again both for joining us. And I want to um, talk about, we, we've talked about what the company does, but we all know that a successful company, it's really about the people that's mm -hmm. there and how you treat the employees and what the employees have and don't have. Mm -hmm. So. Um, I'm going to start by saying this, and I'm going to read it, forgive me, because I want to make sure I read it right. Awarded a best and brightest companies to work for in the nation in both 2016 and 2017. Congratulations to you Thank both you. on Thank that. You. Um, let's talk about that a little bit, because that doesn't come without a lot of thought and a lot of work. Um, you know, what does an award like that mean to Ipswich? Or, and what does that mean for the employee base? Well, I think what it really means is that employees are coming together and creating an environment that we can all be so proud of. Mm -hmm. You know, you can only do so much ownership, management, 
you know, HR, different folks can only do so much yeah. to create that. Um, what the real magic is, is employees coming together and deciding, um, we want to create a place that we can be proud of. Right. We spend so much time at work. We want to go home to our friends and our families <laughs> and our communities. True. We want to be able to be proud of what we do. We want to be able to, to include them in the conversation. And so I think that's, yeah. that's been the huge win. Um, I've been at Ipswich just under two years. And the experience for me has been that employees come together and create this. And um, the fact that we have, um, you know, uh, um, management and ownership that is very supportive of that is is kind of the cherry on top. But employees yes. come together and create it, and it's it's fantastic to watch. It's fantastic. So, and let's talk about their environment, the build sure. out of Wayside, or the build out rather of where you are yep. in Burlington, and um, and what that space looks like, and what that means for employees when they're working there, when they come into work. You know, the build out of that building. Sure, we left a space in Lexington that. Um, you know, it, it was fine. It was probably for a very average um, office environment. And we came to this space in Wayside, and we have a whole floor where the top floor, we have an outdoor balcony, we have a perfect view of Boston, and we just, we tore it down and started over. Um, we have high ceilings, and we have, you know, a garage door that comes up and down to separate space, and we have big open spaces, and we have, you know, um, areas where you can kind of hunker down with your laptop if you want, or have a meeting, and hallways you can kind of camp down in if you want. Yeah. So. Um, you know, again, you're at work all day. Let's make it an enjoyable space, and people have really responded well to it. So it's a bit of a, that city industrial feel. Yeah. Uh, but again, we're not driving into Boston. Well, every there's day, a so. lot of organic material. Stephen did an excellent job with things like barnwood sliding doors, and yeah. there's lots of corrugated metal and you know touches of color throughout. Yeah. But I think um, one of the things that w we really like about the um, the office, the new office, is in our Lexington office. It was like you were in four different buildings. We were all in one building, but there wasn't a common area for everybody to get together. And this was very purposeful in terms of the coffee machines and the refrigerators and the microwaves are all in one central location. And the 35,000 square feet that we have on the top floor of this building, people actually see each other now. It's all We're, open. It's, it's all open. open. And it is, it's, it's really wonderful. And the other thing is, is that the offices are on the inside and the conference rooms, so the people People that are at desks or cubicles have uh, it's a full windows all the way around so you can walk the perimeter and the people have the natural light and they um, and it's not it's not typically reserved for executives or conference rooms right. taking that space and even all offices and conference rooms ev mm. the, every space in the building has a glass wall yes so yeah. outside of one private wellness room yeah. where by law you mandate yeah. you need some private space yes. um, everything has has glass walls so there's no there's no secret meetings happening. There's it's no, transparent. you know, <laughs> it, 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 everything's out there and everyone is together. And yeah. so it was a bit of an adjustment when we first moved, but <laughs> that's the cultural change we wanted with this move. Um, Absolutely. You and know, our theme for 2018 is together. Right. Um, and we know that's what will make us even more successful. So that's, that's what we're working towards. Yeah, you know, um, the work I do puts me out on the road, so I, a lot of the times I'm not in an office, but years ago when I, I did work in an office, I feel like now when you go into places like what you're describing, that's the that's the comfortable environment yeah. for employees now. You know, a little bit of an adjustment to know that everything's open. But it seems like the trend, and tell me if I'm I'm wrong on this, but it seems like the trend is is open working space as opposed yeah. to cubicles and being by yourself. Right. You know, the collaboration works better when that when you're kind of more in an open space and people can kind of. T um, I almost said not touch each other, that could sound good. <laughs> <laughs> I, but, but can actually kind of have that conversation and be able to reach out and, and have a conversation with somebody. Yeah, I, I think that that's, that's true. I mean, it's not just, uh, I think younger people are a little bit uh, more accustomed to be able to move in groups and yes. they'll sit around a table and work. And it, those kind of war room environments when yes. you're trying to solve a problem becomes you know, very important. In my area, uh, in the marketing area, I had three designated offices and I told Stephen, I said, I don't want these to be offices. I just want them to be rooms that people can go in and work in. And that's, yeah. that's pretty much what's happened. It's awesome. Yeah. It really is. So let's talk about philanthropy a little bit because sure. um, it's something that Ipswich mm -hmm. takes to heart, which, um, you know, is near and dear to my heart. I believe, you know, businesses giving back to the community is huge. Um, and everything points to Ipswich has been a great community partner, which is fantastic. Thank you for that. But also just the philosophy behind it, the philosophy behind, you know, um, the philanthropy that Ipswich does and, and, you know, combining the employees with the community and things like that. 
Sure. So we have um, we have a program called Eye Care. You know, Little Eye Ipswich Care. It's been <laughs> part of the organization for many years, well before Gene and I joined, and it's you know it's doing well and doing good. Yeah. And so. Um, we take, we allow employees to give back in a way that makes sense to them. And I think a lot of organizations have their heart in the right place and they say, we, su we support XYZ charity and everything they do goes towards that charity. Mm. What we do is say, what is important to you? What's meaningful for you, your community, your family? Especially as we're a spread out organization. Yes. Mm -hmm. If we were all sitting in Boston and we picked a Boston charity, that would be nice. Yes. Um, People in Galway support the Galway Hospice. People in Alpharetta support the local community center there. People in Madison have um, yep. an organization they like to sponsor. So almost everything we do revolves around some semblance of philanthropy. So oftentimes instead of giving out a prize or an award, we give out um, you know a voucher for a donation. Oh, um, I love here's, that. Here's fifty dollars, and it's not a gift card to Amazon. It's a fifty dollar donation in your name to the charity of your choice, not of the company's choice. Yes. Um, so we sponsor events. We we allow um, donation matching, but I think what's, what the best thing is it's once again bringing it back to what's meaningful for employees, again, and their families. You want to be sticky, right? Yes. And so um, how can you impact your local community? And so we don't have one charity that we right. give all of our money to. Right. We have some charities that get $25 a year from us. We have some 200 right. um, but it helps everyone contribute in a way that is meaningful to them. Right. Um, and we try to work in different events. So we had a, a really big grand opening celebration that Gene put together that was amazing when we moved here to Burlington. Yes. And because of our work with the Wonder Fund, which is an amazing charity that works directly with kids in DCF in Massachusetts, we had Lauren Baker there as our guest speaker. And after the opening you know, ceremonies, I guess you'd <laughs> call it, the employees all came together and we packed bags for kids in DCF care. So we turned it into awesome. a service event. Yeah. And so people feel like we're celebrating, but we're giving back at the same yep. time, and we're finding all different ways to do that. That's so. nice. I, it speaks in volumes for you as a company, actually. It yeah. really does, yeah. because it shows that you care about the community and you care about what your employees want to do, which is really nice. I, I think that we have we three different um, aspects of our business. We care about our customers, of yes. course. Uh, we want our employees to be passionate about working for Ipswich, but we also want to be able to support the local communities in which we operate, and that's right. something that we take at heart, and that's, that's really who Ipswich is. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to ask you this as we um, gonna, we're going to go talk about my second favorite okay, thing. My first right. favorite thing is um, absolutely giving back to the community. My second favorite thing is food. Okay. All day okay. long, food, right? So we'll. I'm um, right there with you. <laughs> yeah, okay, good. But um, and I'm going to bring you back to one sentence. If you could give everybody one sentence about Ipswich, what would you say? Like, if you wanted to give someone a message about Ipswich, what would it be? I'd say it's a great place to work. Right, Stephen. I'd say um, we're passionate about everything that we do. I love it. Okay, and speaking of passion, um, we went out, Katie and I, the job is hard, but we do it every time, um, went out to see Servizio's. Servizio's is located on Wall Street. They, everybody thinks they're um, a, a service just for the building, but if you have not been there, um, join Katie and I. We're going over to Servizio's. You're going to see some of the best food you've ever seen. We'll be right back after that. Hi everybody, we are in the back of Servicios at 1 Wall Street in Burlington. We're here with Kelly Pearson, the executive chef. Kelly's going to be doing a demonstration for us and then we'll hear about this great spot that has been here for how long, Kelly? Almost 15 years. 15 years. So thank you for doing this with us. Tell us what you're making today. Today I'm making a butternut squash ravioli with sautéed apples and spicy pecans. Fantastic. So we are going to show you, or I'm not going to show you anything. Kelly's going to show you how to make it, and then we'll hear about all the other great things that Servicio is doing. I'm going to walk around you so you can do your thing. Add shallots and garlic to the pan. And what kind of stuffing is inside those um, inside the ravioli? It's butternut squash, amaretto, ricotta cheese. They're made by Dinos in oh, nice. Stoneham. Great. I mean Somerville. Sorry. Somerville. All good things come from Somerville. I like to use gala apples. Gala apples. They do not break down as much, so they hold their shape, which is what you need when you're sauteing. And do you find that this is something that people like to eat all year long? Is, is this one of the ones that people look for, Kelly, or do they? It's pretty seasonal. It starts about September, and it goes until probably February. Until February, so you've got to get here soon so you can get her <laughs> raviolis. We'll you. There you go. <laughs> now, are these things that sometimes you put on special here if someone wanted to come and get them, or they come? Yes. yes. Yep. We have these on special. 
do about 10 to 12 specials a day. In the winter, we also do two soups, which we make from scratch, a vegetarian soup and a meat soup. In the summer, it slows down a little bit as far as soup goes. But we do do gazpacho, a bunch of different gazpachos that are very popular. Oh, that's great. I'm going to put a little more salt. I'm going to add a little more See, real chefs can just like kind of do that. <laughs> I'd be like, wait a minute. <laughs> Let me see if I can do <laughs> How long have you been cooking? How long have you been doing this? And I became executive chef about nine or ten years ago. Wow. So I've been here almost 15. So it's been a love of yours. It is a love. I, so this is just going to reduce a little and as you can see it's getting a little bit thicker and it's yep. creating that sauce and melding in with the apples and the apple juice. Then I have an herb mix. This is parsley, sage, rosemary and thyme like the song. I was just going to start <laughs> singing for you. <laughs> right. But no one wants to hear me I sing. Have, um, <laughs> a little bit of cayenne pepper because with the sweet you need a little spicy to create the balance that makes the dish good. Perfect. So are you making these to order when people are ordering this dish or are you, when it's a special, do you have some of it set up and then you'll add the chicken for them? We have some of it set up, okay. but we are making it partially to order them. Perfect. These have, um, we make them in house. They have cinnamon, cayenne, chili powder, a little bit of sugar, salt, and then egg whites makes, them, makes the glaze, it's what, what makes them crunchy. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Tell you what, that's a good looking plate. All right, we're gonna sit down and um, talk about a few other things, but this is butternut squash, give me the butternut squash ravioli with an apple and cream and beautiful pecans and yum. Okay, so we are here with Kelly Pearson who is the executive chef for Servicios. Kelly, I just wanna go through the hours and the location for people watching. We are at One Wall Street. Our hours are 7 to 3 o'clock Monday through Thursday and 7 to 2.30 on Friday. We're not open on the weekends. Okay. And what I was saying earlier, which I want to make sure everybody who's watching, sometimes people are under the impression because it's in a corporate building, they think it's just for the corporate offices. But Servicios is open to the public, yes? Yes, we're open to the public and we're happy to see everyone who comes. We have a lot of regulars from the area that come in. Fantastic. And it's really easy to get to because there's a lot of parking here for those who don't or who, are, who haven't come into One Wall Street, a lot of people have, of course. And then you're also, you do catering, off-site catering as well. Yes, corporate catering. Okay. So when people wanted to order for corporate catering, can they do that? Now that's an interesting question. Do you do catering as well for evenings or afternoons if people wanted to pick it up earlier during yes. your hours? We do that and we also occasionally will stay for a client if they need something at 4 o'clock or 4.30. We do our best to do whatever we can to help the clients. Okay. So um, we obviously saw you making the butternut squash, which was beautiful, and Katie and I did taste tests because that's critically important for the viewing audience. Um, but tell me something, people obviously in the new year, but also just in general, a lot of people like healthy options as well, maybe less fat options, I'll call them. So you do salads, soups, all of that? We do. We do a bunch of different salads. We have salads on our regular menu, and we do our own soups and our own dressings that we make from scratch here. And then we have specials, 10 or 12 specials a day. Right now we're doing a lot of power bowls and quinoa kale salads and different things like that that are very low in fat and high in protein, which we want people to come in here and when they leave after they've had lunch, we want them to still feel good, not like they need a nap. <laughs> exactly, that's right, because that's usually me. <laughs> but what's your favorite? If you could pick a salad that was your favorite that you guys are making right now, what would that be? I'm making right now, I'm making a French lentil salad with Asian barley, which I found, I like to read a lot. When I'm not here, I'm usually reading about food. And I found this, it's called Job's Tears. It's fairly new, it's very high in protein, and it's gluten-free. It's very a very healthy choice. So I did the French lentils, the Job's Tears, lemon, carrots, celery, a little bit of roasted squash, and then I put a little lemon, a little olive oil, honey, and Dijon. Beautiful. So it's clear by listening to you talk that you love to cook. You're a foodie, right? Yeah. You were a foodie from the start, right? That's something I think people are ingrained with. Like, I think they get yes. to be foodies. So. so when was it that you said, I mean, I know you talked about, you know, your kids were younger, you came, you worked on a part-time basis with Guy. By the way, Servizio's been here 15 years. We'll, we'll repeat that for people. Um, and when was it that you said, I'm going to, I, I want to be a chef? The funny thing is when I got married, which is almost 30 years ago, I cooked five things and I really wasn't interested in cooking. 
and my aunt gave me Bon Appetit magazine and I started reading it and I was intrigued. I just started staying home with my children yeah. and I started cooking and people started responding and when my husband and I entertained people started asking me about things and I really became passionate about food then and then I people started asking me to cook for them. Can you, I'm having a party, could you do this? So I had a little side business going before I met Guy doing catering and that's when I really thought you know I think I could be a chef now and maybe do something with this once the boys are older. Right. It's pretty impressive because honestly, and I mean this with all sincerity, when you walk in here, this is not your average cafeteria, quote unquote. I think when people see um, something that's inside an office building, they're assuming it's, it's cafeteria style. And while you can go up and get things, what you're serving is really something that people would go to sit down restaurants for. You know, there's there's so many options for people in here. Do you do you find people are surprised when they say your menu at first? Yes, very surprised. And they ask a lot of different questions. How how do we do it? What do we do? Why do we do it? But we want people to feel when they come in here that they want to come back, that they are not disappointed. It's the same old salad, same old sandwich. We have beautiful salads and sandwiches, but we also provide a lot of different options. If you want to have a cheat day, and you want to have the butternut squash raviolis, or if you want to have the lentil salad with a piece of salmon so that you can go out that night and have a couple drinks and a nice meal. There you go. <laughs> right, exactly. Or you could be like me and have both. Well, no, I'm only kidding. Too, no, that's. But you don't look like you do that every day. I don't know, but um, but it is. You know, it's real. It's actually really impressive to see what's going on in here. So, for those who also don't know, you're a Burlington resident, of course, I am. and you've been here for. 30 31 years. Okay. And um, both you and your family, but also um, Servizio's gives back to the community. So um, you were talking about, instead of tips here, tell, tell everybody who's watching what Servizio does. So we take all of the tips that people give us and we match whatever it is and we donate to people helping people. So we really believe that if you have the opportunity to help someone, you should help them. Right. That's fantastic. And I think sometimes people, you know, they don't really realize that. You know, they don't realize that giving back, there's, there's a lot of good that comes from it. Not only for the charity, but it feels good as a, as a business owner to be giving back. So that's fantastic. And everyone here supports that, and they feel good about it, too. That's fantastic. All right, so you told us your favorite salad, but just throwing everything out there, your favorite thing to make. <laughs> I wouldn't pick a specific item. Yeah. I'm very seasonal. So right now I'm, I'm, I'm almost getting over winter. I'm kind of finished with the squash and the, all of those things that we've been making. And I'm looking forward to lemon and asparagus and all of the new fresh things that come in with the spring. Spring peas and all of those things. So I would say my favorite thing to make is something unexpected where I go in the walk-in and I think, okay, these are what I have today and I'm going to make a special. Almost like chopped. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's perfect. Perfect, right. And you want to know what I love about it is because it's seasonal here, people, when they come back, they could really be seeing different plates altogether just based on the season that they're in. Yes, you could you could come a few times a week and see something different. We change our specials, we don't, we probably make 12 to 15 orders. So when you come back, if you came on Monday, quite often if you came back Wednesday and you wanted what we had Monday, it might not be here because we're always changing so that if you work in the building or in the area and you want to come here, we're going to give you something new all the time. Okay. Let's talk about breakfast. Um, breakfast. We, are, we do a lot of corporate catering for breakfast now. It's very popular. We do breakfast sandwiches, fruit salad, bagels and muffins, pastries. Uh, yogurt parfaits are very popular. We just added a Greek yogurt parfait, so no sugar in the, in the yogurt, or very low sugar. You can get it with nuts or granola or some fresh berries. We do breakfast burritos, breakfast quesadillas, frittatas, wow. stratas. French toast, Belgian waffles. <laughs> Belgian waffles. <laughs> With whipped cream and strawberries and go. yes. Not to be the day that you also have ravioli. No. Yeah. Okay. But we do a lot of that in the area and yeah. in the surrounding towns. People are interested more now in getting their people in in the morning and having morning meetings and it's a good way to get give people a good start to the day. Absolutely. Burlington um, companies delivery is free, you yes. said, correct? Free in Burlington and, and you do deliver outside of Burlington absolutely. as well. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes. And then um, let's see, if you could tell somebody something about Servicios, like a message. If you wanted to give somebody a message about 
Servizios, what would you say? Because I almost find there's a lot of people that come here, it's busy at lunch, it's busy at breakfast, but it's almost like a little hidden secret to some people who maybe just never make it down this way, or you know? So yes. if you were going to give that person a little something about Servizios, what do you think you'd say? I would say you can come here and it feel, I would like you to feel like you're coming to my home. Mm -hmm. When you come here, we we're happy to have you here. We want to make your experience exactly the way you'd like it. And there are often times we do miss the mark occasionally, but we're going to make it right. We're going to fix it. We're going to make it better. And the owner, Guy Chalfi, and I are always available to all of our customers. And that's the difference between us and, say, a chain or a place where there are a lot of people working. If you need to speak to someone, you're going to speak to me, the executive chef, or the owner. Fantastic. All right, everybody, you heard that. Servizios. I'm with Kelly Pearson, who's the executive chef. One Wall Street in Burlington, open five days a week. 7 a.m. is the opening, and open till 3 every day, except Fridays closes at 2.30. Um, you do not want to miss it. Uh, for Back Talk Foodies, I'm Sonia Rollins. All right, everybody, we're back. Servizios. Um, by the time you watch this, uh, she may not be making that butternut squash that she was making that day. It was phenomenal, but I assure you there will be another special that will be great. Um, if you guys haven't been there, you should go. It was unbelievably <laughs> good and not too far from you or your employees. All right. I want to thank you both for coming and joining us today. Um, again, Ipswich is at Wayside. Wayside. 15 yes. Wayside. 15 Wayside, Wayside, Wayside yeah. a new company to Burlington. We appreciate having you in the, as a member of the chamber, and we appreciate having you um, in Burlington. So thank you again both for joining us. Thank you, Sonia. Thank, thank you for having you. us. All right, everybody. We'll see you soon. For Backtalk, I am Sonia Rollins.